Hey guys, it's Stefan here again. Uh, you know, just uh, finishing up tonight, uh, getting a couple of um, these bandsaw wheels balanced, and uh, it's not something I honestly do like much of. Um, I've worked a bit with them on sawmills, um, but um, on, on this type of um, wheel, it's I'm as much a beginner as anyone else. Uh, but something that I did learn um, a few years ago that I thought I should pass on is just sort of a maybe a general overview and a couple little tricks that. Uh, I have used and, and I've learned from others and I thought maybe uh, someone out there might might want it as well. Uh, if you're like me and you tend to buy um, maybe a piece of equipment that doesn't work as well as it should uh, at a reduced cost uh, knowing that you can fix it up or uh, or you would rather save what you have um, instead of replacing it etc etc and you do repairs or modifications you're going to find that being able to balance wheels like this is something you'll probably run into eventually. So I'm going to show you a couple different types. Um, as uh, as we can see, uh, this one sort of looks a little holy, uh, and it is Sunday, so that that does fit. Uh, but um, it was quite out of balance. Um, when you pull a, a, a wheel, you don't necessarily have to pull a wheel to, to balance it, um, but you do want to check and be sure that there's no defects, uh, no lumps, no um, definitely also no uh, cracks in the casting. Like, give it a good once over. This is your, your time to do it. Um, you can tell I've already got the um, tire off and doing the tires at the same time. Um, and generally speaking, uh, this bearing is not sitting flush. It actually presses in more. Um, generally speaking, there will be some sort of flange, uh, a rub collar, or a washer. In this case, a uh, 10 cent washer. That's going to give the clearance the pulley needs away from the casting um, so that the bearing and pulley um, operate without the, the sort of the flange of this uh, pulley dragging on the, uh, the post of the saw, uh, if, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, and then in this case, once we've done a visual inspection, um, providing that you don't have any type of taper lock sleeve or anything out of the ordinary from what this is. Leave the nut off or keep a very light load on if you do put a nut on. And simply by giving it a spin and then you wait till, obviously you wouldn't stop it but this thing will keep going, till a certain point where it stops and you make a tick. And you do it again and wherever it stops you make a tick. And uh, you can probably see in here there's a whole bunch of ticks and erase ticks and then more ticks and erase marks and uh, different color chalk as I'm going through the process. So uh, at the end of the day it gives you an idea as to where your wheel is at and um, you know you don't need to be 100% but you should be able to have the heavy spot at the end of, at the, end of the day sit just like that without problems and um, very light movement should just easily spin the wheel uh, which indicates good bearings and good balance um, and uh, that wheel will probably take about two minutes to stop at that speed so I'm happy with that. Now things are a little different down here so this is the drive end or the drive side uh, drive pulley whatever you want to call it and um, you can't easily give it much of a spin it doesn't really want to free wheel. The uh, reason behind it, it, it it's, the belt is disconnected in the back, but there's um, there's three sets of bearings most likely in there, if not at least two, and they're generally uh, a much tighter um, tolerance bearing because of the fact that there's a heavy load on a pulley on the back side of that. Um, and then in a different but not opposing force, there's a heavy load on this bandsaw pulley. So you have a drive pulley on one side, pulling off to the left, you got this uh, bandsaw tension pulling up and generally they have to um, uh, do a, a wider bearing configuration. It's, it's not, um, it's just not conducive to it, it rolling really quite as smoothly. So uh, remember this, drive sides, left hand thread. And uh, if you forget that and you break a bolt, um, make sure you know your local service center's contact number. If it's something like this, the 
like 15, 30 seconds a bolt. It's kind of oddball. I thought it'd be metric, but metric didn't fit. So, in this case, uh, what do we do? I mean, we can't really spin it. Uh, obviously, I had to balance it. So, this is a trick I learned from an old fellow. And uh, today, old is anyone over the age of 32. Grab yourself a ball bearing. Um, if you're in a pinch, you could use uh, a end of a smooth screwdriver. Uh, you know, you don't want to use something tapered. You want to use something obviously that'll allow it to roll. In this case, if you can grab, get a hold of a large ball bearing like this, size of a golf ball, you are in business. And we're going to place this wheel right on top of it. Now the important thing is, and this is kind of tedious, and this is the part you're going to want to skip, and you don't want to, you shouldn't skip, is take your square, figure out at what point and at what point they're even. You don't have to go all the way around the wheel. All you got to do is make sure this point's even and this point's even. If those two are even, the rest of the wheel is going to follow, unless your table's out of whack. So, at that point, now I don't have it even, so it's going to not be accurate. But, at that point, take a light hammer. And you want one, one with some bounce in it. Um, a woodworking mallet would be a bad choice. A finishing hammer like this would be a good choice. And this is we're not beating anything to death, we're just giving a little light tap. Now this thing has been balanced, so it doesn't really want to go anywhere. When I first started doing this, after about four or five taps, the pulley dropped. Okay, so there we go. Sorry, that was probably really bad camera uh, skills. Obviously, I cannot uh, rub my belly and pat my head or whatever at the same time. Uh, neither can I capture this properly in video while tapping. Uh, but you get the idea that the heavy side is going to drop. So then make a mark on it, give it a bit of a spin, just so you're not always working the same side. Just take some variables out of it, do the same thing. Oh, heavy side over there drops again, put another mark. After a while, you're going to have a few marks in a, gr a certain grouping, and you're going to be able to tell pretty easily where that's, where that's at. Now, uh, if you want to get even fancier, what you can do as well is uh, um, grab yourself a random orbit sander and um, put, uh, you'll have to clamp the pad, uh, a block of wood or some sort of something dense like MDF uh, onto the table. You can't just simply just sort of like run it, holding it maybe against the table. It, it really has to transfer well. But if you do set it up well that way, um, It'll turn what will what'll take 10 or 15 taps into two seconds or so with the uh, with the sander. So it's kind of a, a another either or. Uh, not everybody uh, has more than one hammer or whatnot or likes hammers at all in their wood shop. So that being said, like I said, we're gonna put we put on some new Carter tires and I uh, looked at the old ones. The old tires weren't necessarily not necessarily um, worn out, but they just were completely uneven. Um, well, I don't have an old one on there to compare, so that was kind of stupid of me. But um, you could visually see the uh, difference in thickness as you slowly spun the wheel. So, uh, just the fact that there's uniformity in this Carter urethane wheel or tire right off the bat uh, has me pleased, and I'm quite hopeful. So, I've been doing things throughout this uh, bandsaw for a couple of years, and uh, it's quite, it runs quite well, um, really, for the money I have into it. I, I honestly cannot complain, but um, this wheel balancing has been in the back of my mind for a, at least a year now, and so I thought, this is the time. Anyways, I hope this helps somebody, and... Um, you know, I'm sure someone's going to say something about drilling too many holes and it's going to break on you and et cetera, et cetera. Could happen. Um, you know, use common sense. Uh, don't sue me if it does break. And remember, at the end of the day, if you're not going to try to balance it, you probably want to buy some better wheels. So I decided to save myself the uh, 80 to 100 bucks a wheel and um, balance them. And it uh, looks like they're going to be just fine.